All right, so so where are we, Jason? Uh, as you can see here, this is uh, this is the famous gates where they. This is uh, where my tire yard. I had a, I had a uh, tire yard here, you know. Um, this is where I got raided for the start of the uh, the McIntyre undercover, the, you know, program that. But I mean, you, you lost all of this, didn't you? I mean, there is. A... Oh. There is a cost to all of this, isn't there? You know, the fact that you lost your business and, and what did you lose? Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I had, um, it's now an MOT station, but uh, <coughs> when I had it, it was a tyre shop. I, it, you know, my big trade was uh, part-worn tyres, but I had two recovery trucks, um, you know. Well, you know, one stood me in like eight grand, and another stood me in like 13 or 14 grand, you know what I mean? You know, they was on the, on the road, uh, Constantly, you know, if they wasn't on the road, um, I, 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 had a, I was getting a lot of work out of a firm, and I was picking up their cars from um, from the auction because they would they would carry two cars each. So I would. Uh, so <laughs> not only did I lose, people lost their jobs. You know, I had a, I had a kid. You know, Aaron who worked for me. I had two two geezers driving the trucks for me, and if they wasn't picking up the motors uh, from from there, they was picking up scrap scrap. Uh, cars. I was running the, the motors in, obviously, and uh, you know we'd, we'd get the boots off of them. You know, I'd, I'd have the tyres and repair them or whatever, and as long as they was good, you know, uh, I'd sell them as part-worn tyres. You know. Uh, so I mean, he basically he comes in and does the, a, a job on you, and then there's a huge aftermath of prison and people losing jobs and everything. You know. Yeah, of course, and you know, I mean, uh, what people don't understand is, or that they. they Obviously, they're not going to portray this on on the documentaries. They they had a, they pretended that they had a courier company um, that they used for illegality, but I can't say it on here. But you know, you know, I will plug my book, and it's in my book because uh, it's gone through all the solicitors and the legality, so it, it can be read in the book. It's only a game, but you know, basically, they offered me. They asked me to give them a price on their on their courier company for their tyres. You know, obviously I wanted no tyres because they had no vans. So I give them a price and I got the contract. Now I had a tyre shop, so why would I not want to get work and get paid from straight work as that's what my living is or my livelihood or part of my livelihood you know so um but people behind the scenes don't know this they don't know that you know because um they wasn't in the courtroom they haven't read the book and you know they haven't seen the 344 hours worth of video footage on me so uh, they only see the one hour that, that, that was exposed on bbc prime time i must say and uh, there were seven and a half million viewers which to be honest i'm quite happy about because we beat eastenders that night so, I mean, how bitter are you about sort of losing that business that you set up? You know, to be honest with you, look, onwards and upwards, you know, I always, another one of my mottos is good follows bad, you know? I'm a bit of a strong character, you know? Uh, you know, what can you do? There's no point. At the time, I was fuming, you know, like, when I was in Wandsworth Hall, I wanted, I just wanted my recovery trucks to be, but, but the council got them and they crushed them because they didn't have tax on them. You know, fucking hell, they come with a right few quid, you know what I mean? You know, but that's all right. But as long as he's all right, the mongrel, you know, they, you know, but it's a fucking liberty, really. But, you know, there's nothing I can do about people losing their fucking jobs. You know, I'm swagged, I'm away, and I'm behind the door. Um, What's the sort of personal cost afterwards? Because, I mean, you come out and your business has been decimated, as it were, and you've got to start again. How tough is all of that? Well, it's, you know, listen, it's a fucking lot of money. I wouldn't want to tell you what I fucking lost. I've got to tell you, you know, I was earning good money. I was getting good money out of, uh, out of picking up these cars for, for a massive company, by the way, that, that, that would phone me up, that would phone me up and, uh, you know, say they've got 20 cars at the auction. Can I go and pick them up? Mm -hmm. You know, fucking hell. Do you know what I mean? And I was getting, you know, and that would be, you know, I might go and pick up 50 cars from during the week. Okay, sometimes I might go and pick up, you know. But anyway, these things happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, Just kind of, uh, must be kind of weird being outside the place that you were running and you know seeing it and it's, it not being yours. Well, it was mine. Let me tell you one thing: the, the, the fucking the, the, the Indian that owned it. Fuck me. I had my caravan. I had my trailer in the back there, and, uh, and I'm in the and I'm you know I, I was talking to. Uh, 
the old Bill didn't like it, but obviously, you know, as soon as they've come and what have you, and I, I said a few things in Romany to the fucking, to, to the kid who works for me and all that, so the old Bill didn't understand what I was saying, you know what I mean? And they, oh, you fucking fat piking cunt and all that. I said, I oh, know, but while I'm eating edgehog pie in Wandsworth tonight, I said, you'll be on your fucking three quid an hour, well done. Do you know what I mean? But when I had my trailer in the fucking, in, in the back and, you know, they, they, they found a, they found a, um, uh, a phone book in there. And they said, you know, fucking hell, you've got, you know, you've got Howard Marks's number and Freddie Foreman's, Pretty Roy Shaw's, Dave Courtney's, you know, uh, you know, going, you know, Carl Leach, you know, boom, 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 going through all these fucking people's numbers. Do you know what I mean? You know, and I said, well, you know, I would do, it's a phone book. <laughs> fucking, I don't mean no harm. What am I meant to have in the phone book? You know what I mean? Um, but, uh, you know, obviously I had, I had uh, you know, a lot of other people in there as well, you know. And they took it for evidence, and I don't know what evidence, and I've never got any of it back. And they said, and they took the trailer, and you know, so you lose the trailer, then you lose the thing. But as I'm getting nicked, the cunt's putting the bolts on the on the thing, because he, you know, do you know what I mean? He's but anyway, it don't matter, you know, because I give a few quid to get in there in the first place. Yeah. So anyway, it's not a problem. We retrieved it, and uh, I got a few quid back for the gaff when I come out. But anyway, that's neither near nor there.